welcome to my channel. I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing three software stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Become a member of the channel and I can do a more in-depth valuation of the ticker of your choice. The first company we're going to look at is Autodesk. This company makes software products and services for the architecture, engineering, construction, manufacturing, education, and entertainment industries. Autodesk became best known for AutoCAD, but now develops a broad range of products such as Sketchbook. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company. Their market cap is $49.4 billion. They're turning at $2.25 a share. And to calculate shares outstanding, that's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, 219 million. We're gonna need this number for later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at the financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you generally want to invest in a company with positive, consistent, free cash flow because that means they're generating more cash than they're spending. If a company has negative free cash flow, they could be investing in their business to grow it and make it even bigger in the future, but you want to look into these things to make sure that's the case. Their free cash flow is all over the place. It's 94 million positive in 2016, then it drops to a negative in 2017. Then it jumps way back up there to 310 million and it shoots up to 1.4 billion in 2019. So it's really hard to value or invest in companies that don't provide much consistency because you never know which way they're going. Net income is the profit and loss for the company. It's total revenue minus total expenses and they have negative net income in three of the four years. So they're not operating profitably. That's a little concerning. Their revenue is growing quite a bit from 2 billion to 3.3 billion. So that's a good sign. They just need to do a better job at managing their expenses. They have $2 billion of debt in their capital structure. They pay 2.6% interest on their debt and cost of debt is 1.88%. To get cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they have 100% debt in their capital structure because they have negative equity. When a company has negative equity, that means total assets on a balance sheet are more than total liabilities. That's generally not a good thing. Their beta is 1.51, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. But the WAC is just their cost of debt, which is 1.88%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 66 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $63.5 billion. We divide that by 219 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of 289. They're trading at 225, so they're trading at a 22% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at 308, so they're also saying the stock is undervalued. Just because a company does not have the best financials doesn't mean it's overvalued the stock. The price of the stock may have come down to a point where it's a good buy. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. So it seems like the stock price has only been going up the past few years, so it could be a good value. It just depends on how you view the company and how you think other investors will view the company because stock price is really based on supply and demand of the market. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a really bad PE. The median in the market is 16.4. The average is 18.8. .8. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15. They're at 230. That means investors are paying $230 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales isn't so good either. The median in the market's 1.8, the average is 5.1. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 15.1. So investors are paying $15.10 for $1 of revenue. Price to book is negative. 
The median in the market's 2.4, the average is 4.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Since they have negative equity, they have a negative price to book. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities. They have a good interest coverage ratio. The median in the market is 4.0, the average is 13.1. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 6.4, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes, also called operating income on the income statement. They have a negative ROE since they have negative equity. They don't have a good current ratio. The median current ratio is 1.3, the average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current liabilities, so they may need to take on more debt. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Salesforce, Citrix, Datadog, Intuit, Canaxis, MyTech Systems, Mogo, Real Matters, Texas, and the Trade Desk, all in the same industry as Autodesk. And if Autodesk has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. They're worse in price to earnings. They are a little better in price to sales. They have negative price to book, so we can't look at that. Their current ratio is below one, so they're worse than the average. They don't have an ROE. They're 100% debt. They are better in market cap at 49 billion, and they don't pay a dividend. To summarize, I have them trading at a 22% discount. Their ratios don't look so good and their financials look a little shaky as well. A lot of times investors don't even look at the financials and sometimes if they do, they look past these problems and hope the company will continue growing and eventually become really profitable. The second company we're gonna look at is Salesforce. Salesforce is a cloud-based software company. It provides customer relationship management software, CRM software, and also sells a complimentary suite of applications focused on customer service, marketing automation, and analytics. Let's get started with the model. Really big company, 231 billion market cap, trading at 243 a share. And their free cash flow looks really good, 1.7 billion, and it keeps growing up to 3.7 billion a year. But their net income is really small relative to their free cash flow. They have really good revenue and it grows a lot. It doubles from 2017 to 2020, 8 billion to 17 billion. But their margins are tiny. It's almost like a supermarket, 1% margins. Let's look at a capital structure, $2.7 billion of debt, Interest rate they pay in their debt is 5.76%. Cost of debt is 3.6%. And they only have 7% debt in that capital structure, which means they have 93% equity. Cost of equity is 11.8%. We figured out cost of equity using the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. The market as a whole has a beta of one. This has a beta of 1.24. So the stock is a little more volatile than the market. We use a capital asset pricing model to figure out the cost of equity, and the higher the beta, the higher the cost of equity. And their WAC is 11.24%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 134 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $107 billion. We divide that by 950 million shares. We get a calculated stock price of 112. They're trading at 243, so they're trading at a 116% premium. It's a strong sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're at 221, so they're saying the stock is a little overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. The stock price has been driven up to about 270, 280. It's come back down a little, but it looks like it could be way overvalued. But the stock price could keep going up. So if you are interested in this company, it could be a good investment. Although according to my model, it's overvalued. Let's look at the financial ratios. Terrible PE, that stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 18.31. Not such a good price of sales, that stock price of a sales per share, I like to see below 2.5, that 13.5. And also not such a good price to book, that stock price of a book value per share, I like to see below 3.5, they're at 6.8. They do have a good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense, I like to see above 2.0, they're at 3.0. 
They don't have a good ROE that's net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 0%. Current ratio is good, that's current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current liabilities. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Autodesk, Citrix, Datadog, Intuit, Canaxis, MyTech Systems, Mogo, Real Matters, Texas, and a Trade Desk. All in the same industry as Salesforce. If Salesforce has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in PE, of course. They're a little better in price to sales and price to book. Current ratio, they're worse, but 1.1 is okay. ROE, of course, they're worse at 0%. Debt, they're doing really well at 7%. A lot of companies in this industry are at 0%. Market cap, they're the biggest company by far, $230 billion and they don't pay a dividend. To summarize, I have them trading at a 116% premium. Their ratios are decent, but they have really strong free cash flow and revenue, but their net income is pretty low. The last company we're gonna look at is Citrix. Citrix is a software company that provides server, networking, SaaS, and cloud computing technologies. Citrix products are used by over 400,000 clients worldwide, including 99% of the Fortune 100 companies and 98% of the Fortune 500 companies. Let's get started with the model. It's also a large cap company at 16.6 .6 billion market cap. They're churning at 134 a share and they have 124 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow looks really good because it's positive and consistent. The net income also looks pretty good. In 2017, they were hit with a one-time tax charge of $429 million by the U.S. government. The government taxed a lot of companies who kept money overseas to try to encourage them to put money into American banks. Their revenue looks pretty weak because it's at $3.4 billion, then comes down to $3 billion, so it's not really growing. Let's look at a capital structure, $743 million of debt. They pay 6.2% interest on their debt, and cost of debt is 5.4%. They have 47% debt in their capital structure, which means they have 53% equity. Cost of equity is only 3.78%, and we figure that out using the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a really low beta, 0.19, so the stock does not move much relative to the market and their WAC is 4.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that $20 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $19.5 billion. We divide that by 124 million shares and we got a calculated stock price of 157. They're trading at 134, so they're trading at a 15% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street says the stock is worth 174, so a little more than I'm valuing them at. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. As you can see, the stock is really steady since it has a low beta. It's been coming up little by little. It did jump up during coronavirus, and it looks like it's sitting at pretty close to its all-time high. Let's look at our financial ratios. They have a weak PE, that's stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 24. Not such a great price to sales ratio, that's stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 5.5. Not such a great price to book either. That stock price over book value per share, I like to see below 3.5, they're at 19.8. They have a good interest coverage ratio, that's EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 12.1, so they can easily cover their interest payments. They have a really good ROE, that's net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, they're at 81%. They have a bad current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 0.8. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Autodesk, Salesforce, Datadog, Intuit, Canaxis, MyTech Systems, Mogo, Real Matters, Texas, and the Trade Desk. All in the same industry as Citrix. If Citrix has a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they are better in PE, 
because the average in the industry is so bad. Price to sales are also better, a lot better than the average. They're much worse than average in price to book and current ratio. They have the best ROE by far of all the companies at 81%. They're worse in debt at 47%, the average is only 25%. And in terms of market cap, even though they're not a small company, they are smaller than average at 16.6 billion. And their dividend is higher than average at 1%. Most companies don't pay a dividend, so it's really low the average dividend yield. To summarize, I have them trading at a 15% discount. Their ratios are pretty good. Their financials are really good. Their revenue is a little weak because it's not growing, but their free cash flow and net income is pretty consistent. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies and become a member and I could do a valuation of the ticker of your choice. Thanks for watching.